feel like I live in a world made of cardboard, always taking constant care not to break something, to break someone, never allowing myself to lose control, even for a moment, or someone could die. But you can take it, can't you, big man? What we have here is a rare opportunity for me to cut loose and show you just how powerful I really am. What's up, guys? Faruqi Bros here. Today is podcast number 18, and we're joined by a very special guest today. It's none other than George Newbern, the voice of Superman. Hello. <laughs> now, uh, just introducing all of us again, uh, I'm your editor-in-chief and host, as always, Shiraz Faruqi, and I'm joined by my brother, Zayan. What's up, guys? My cousin, Umar. Hey, everyone. And my other cousin, Samir. What's up? So, like I just <laughs> said right now, we got uh, literally the voice of Superman in the house. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's good. It's even hearing him talk right now. It's it's kind of wild. And I'm sure for our listeners, it's probably That's the so same funny. feeling. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And uh, George, just uh, let's just kick it off right away. Uh, this is a question I ask everybody, and I want to give you that same platform to kind of just give everyone your story. And the sure. question is, what is your origin story? You know, like what's your origin story? What what makes you George Newburn? Let me see. Wow, um, a great question. Um, what makes me uh, myself? <laughs> um, I'm uh, I'm just a human being living out in Los Angeles. I've got a wife and three kids, and been uh, been uh, at this acting thing since uh, a long time ago. Since 1986, I've been out here, um, crushing the pavement. You know, doing jobs as they come. And uh, Superman and the Justice League was one of my. It's definitely the longest job I've ever had, and and uh, certainly one of my my favorites for sure. So that's awesome, man. So I guess we can just jump straight into that. How sure. did you land the role of Superman? Well, you know, it, it sounds kind of uh, uh, boring, but it was literally just an audition. I didn't know, I, I wasn't paying attention because, you know, they call you as I hear, you got, you have a meeting at three o'clock or two o'clock, whatever. It's for an animated uh, series. So, okay, great. So I go and I go, oh, this, this is, this is, this is for Superman. That's cool. And then um, I, uh, then, I just auditioned and did, I, I didn't even think anything about it. I just said, okay, yeah, we'll see what it was. And I didn't, usually you don't know if these things turn into something, you know, small or big or whatever. And this um, turned out that I just replaced Tim Daly because Tim was working on um, uh, the show Wings at the time and was unavailable, I guess, for scheduling and stuff. And so, um, so I took over for him. And uh, uh, so then the rest is, it just kind of kept going and going. And I, I didn't, realize it was as big a deal as it was um until we got into it after the first year i was like oh my gosh man these fans are on fire for this thing so awesome. super cool so uh were you into superheroes as a kid and you know did you have a favorite growing up you know what i um <clears throat> i was into some comic books but i i was more into sort of archies and uh, um uh you know sort of the tales from the crypt and um stuff like that um uh, but i i and I, and I enjoyed the superheroes, but I was not sort of uh, into Superman per se at the time, you know. But what was cool is that I, I, as I was, as I got older, I, I really, really, really loved the movie Superman with Christopher Reeve. And then um, a couple of years after I saw that movie, when I came to LA, I got a movie, and all my most of my scenes were with Chris Reeve. Um, and then um, you know, I asked him about Superman at the time, and uh, he was, said he was. You know, a little tired of the moniker, but he, he's come to he'd come to embrace it, and um, I just think it's uh, so ironic and fitting that I would <laughs> do the voice of Superman after for <laughs> so many awesome, years. After. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. What, what influence did you? Uh, what influences did you draw from when when you were you know when you got the role of Superman? Like, um, you know, I think um, influences. I, I didn't. I wanted to make him as real as possible and not cartoony. And I'd heard, you know, a lot of the other, like the super friends was the sort of the one that I, I hadn't even really listened to Tim Daly before. And I didn't want to, because I didn't want to be conscious of whatever his voice was. Um, but I'd heard the super friends version, I guess sort of the late seventies, early eighties, I think is what it was. And, um, it, um, I wanted to not do that because I thought it was too stylized. Um, so, 
but Bruce Timm's animation and, and uh, Andre Romano's direction pretty much sort of had us be real, but I, I felt like I wanted to make Superman strong, but clearly idealistic, you know. Um, and he was sort of the moral, is the sort of moral center of, of these guys. And it's funny you mention it right now. You, you said that, you know, you didn't get to, <clears throat> you didn't purposely didn't want to look at Tim Daly's work as Superman, right. but in some ways, like, there is some kind of synergy, especially when you watch the episodes of Superman, the animated series, and jump into Justice League, especially in, like, later episodes, like Darkseid episodes, where there's a lot of past synergy. There seems to be, like, a, a good kind of chemistry between both voices, and you feel uh, like you're playing, like, an older <laughs> version of that same Superman. It could, it could be. I, I, you know, uh, I think maybe... You you noticed that I, I I didn't notice that but I, I could maybe see that. <laughs> so Bruce Tim never like talked to you about like uh, the Superman uh -uh. series nothing like that no like prerequisite. No, no, he just said give me give me who you think this guy is and and I um sort of um th originally they they pitched my voice down because my voice is a, was a little higher than I think that um that I wanted to do him and I, it was funny after a year they stopped doing it my voice sort of settled down and and became a sort of a lower, stronger register than I, than I initially did. Cool. And I guess so. you have one more follow-up question. You mentioned uh, a little earlier, a few minutes ago, about how you actually work with Christopher Reeve and you got to kind of... Yeah. Uh, so can you again go a little bit more about that? Like, how was that whole experience like? And you said you were a big fan of his movie as well. So how was that yeah, experience? I, I was just a big, uh, you know, a big fan of his in general. I thought he's a great actor. And, and um, he also did this movie called Somewhere in Time. Which was a he'd done it after Superman, and I just thought it was so good. Yeah, yeah, and, I I agree. Um, I watched the movie; it was it was really great. Yeah, it was really really good and kind of heartbreaking. And um, he was just a hilarious guy, and and all my stuff was with Burt Reynolds and and um, Christopher Reeve, and we um, we just were. I just spent hours and hours and hours just hanging out with him. And I said, God, how? how I said, How has that been? Has it been like you know? Has it just been tough to sort of everyone? thinks you're just Superman, Superman, Superman. And he said, you know, ultimately he said, it's good to be known for something and, you know, I'll take it. So, uh, and I, I get it, you know, cause I've got a couple of things that I've done in my career that people go, Oh, you're the guy from the one thing. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm happy. I'm, whatever. <laughs> it's, if it keeps me working and people are happy, that's good. And it's just fun. for our listeners, if they want to watch that movie or whatever, what was the project you worked well, it was with? It was called switching channels. It actually was not a very good movie, but, um, it, uh, <laughs> It was a remake of His Girl Friday with Kathleen Turner, Burt oh. Reynolds, and Chris. Um, it wasn't that great, honestly, but uh, it was for me. It was like the this, this second job I had in LA, and I was thrilled. You know, I was like, "Whoa, I'm in a movie! This is incredible!" So, but it, it was fun. Nice. So fun. I think let's get into, like the next like kind of the meaty topic, and let's dive into your work with Justice League. Sure, uh, sure. What are some of your favorite episodes of the series? And we all kind of can share ours and kind of get into it. But looking back, like, what were some of your favorite moments recording? Or what? Some episode that stood out to you? Uh, looking back now. Okay, because I'm 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 really bad at remembering the title of the episodes, and I know a lot of the fans are way better at it than I am. Um, but I can I can sort of relay what I remember the, the episode yeah, sure. being about. Um, I, I especially liked um, the episodes where I got to have be a, had a split personality. It was like the the good Superman and the bad Superman, and. Um, the, the sort of the more evil Superman. This, he was. I've forgotten the characters. He he, he talked. He almost he almost had to talk like almost like he was a possessed robot. Um, it was just so much fun to play. Um, you guys would probably be able to look that up. Episode yeah, I think up it's. A, I'm pretty sure it's a better world, right? Where you. Yes, that's it. Yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> it. Well, I just had so much fun doing that. Yeah, and uh, um, that was a great episode, and we agree. And actually, if we can share with our audience what our favorite episodes were as well. I'll just start off. Oh, My favorite episode was. Uh, again, like I'm a Superman fanboy, so the Superman episode awesome. really split out to me. It. Uh, and it was an episode <laughs> called Twilight, where it was you. Oh, yeah, Twilight. That yeah. Was, that was fantastic. And I think, that, was, that was a great episode. And I think your voice work in that episode was just like amazing. I mean, I can give you like an idea. The four of us were actually very little. I think this was 2001, 2002 when this episode came mm. out. And we were all like sitting at my grandma's house, and we actually had a sleepover just for that episode, like for Twilight to air. Oh, crazy, man. I cannot believe that. That's because I, I, I know time is such a weird, elastic thing, but you tell me that you guys were little watching that in 2001. I'm like, 2001, I remember, like, you know, I was watching the, the Twin Towers come down, and I was like, Jesus, this is so. Uh, yeah, we were, is, yeah, we were only like four or five years old, six years old each, and, uh, 
Unbelievable. And we were big fans of obviously the Superman animated series, and we had enough of a mindset that we knew the last episode of Superman was that he had this standoff with Dark Side, and there's a lot of history there. Mm-hmm. And then your episode yep. with Twilight, it was just straight picking up, and that one scene that we're gonna probably put a piece of in the beginning of this podcast. Uh, Any minute now, Brainiac will explode. And guess what? You're going with him. No, Dark Side. To get off this rock, you'll have to go through me. You really are a glutton for punishment. Time and again, I've beaten you, humbled you. What makes you think today's outcome will be any different? Because this time, I won't stop until you're just a greasy smear on my fist. Let's go. That'd be great. Uh, yeah, of you just great. warning Dark Side and telling him you're gonna make him a greasy yeah. smear on your fist, like it just, yeah, it was like fanboy <laughs> heaven. <laughs> you know, I, f- I f- um, Clancy Brown is a friend of mine, and we b- we, we both graduated from the same university at oh, Northwestern. Nice. He's a little older than me, but his Lex Luthor, I think, is just incredible. Yeah, and uh, he he, um, I'm always fascinated with voice actors because, you know, you hear, you meet them, and then you hear them, and they they don't necessarily go together. But Clancy Brown's head is so huge. He's like got a his 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 skull is like an echo chamber, and his everything sound like he and Kevin Conroy. Their their voices sound so amazing, you know. Basically, the structure of their head is makes it so resonant, you know. Yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> I know that's a great a weird, point. Weird I never detail, thought of, never thought about it that way, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Zian, what's your favorite episode? Share it with George. Yeah, so mine would be um, for the man who has everything. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, once again, your performance that episode was just, like, spectacular. I mean, uh, you, you really feel Superman's pain when his dreams are really taken away from him and he has to let his, his son, his, like, not imaginative, yeah. but, like, his dream son die and just to come back to the regular world. I think your performance yeah. was just so spectacular. You really felt uh, his thank pain. thank you. I th- was was Dana was uh, Lois Lane in that episode? I believe she was. Wasn't yeah, she? yeah, she was playing the like the mixture of Lana and Lois. She played that uh, character, the dream wife. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I remember Dana Delaney was there for, for that, and and um, she's a great woman and a great uh, lover. Lois Lane. Yeah, uh, Umar, what about you, man? Uh, my favorite episode is actually uh, Destroyer. Um, what I can't remember which one that was. Which that's which uh, that's when Superman uh, gives a speech to Darkseid where he tells him like. How he feels, like how it's like to be him in the world. Mm-hmm. Like everything feels like cardboard, and um, oh yeah, okay. okay. Has, was it has, sort of a long? Like it. it was a long speech, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah, really yeah I'm trying to remember it too, and I'm yeah. just. It, it was the last episode, right, of the series. Yeah, it was. It was. The was last it episode. really? Yeah, that was the final episode. You had this final oh, like oh, message to Dark Side. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Like I say, you guys are a little better about the titles of these things, but. Um, <laughs> If I had them all in front of me, I'd be able to go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Samir, but, finish it off. What about you, man? Um, I guess my favorite episode would be the Hereafter episode, where, you know, at the beginning it appeared that Superman died. Then, you know, it turns out that he, he isn't actually dead. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I, I, again, I'm, that one's escaping me, but uh, I feel like I screamed and got electrocuted so many times. I can't remember when I actually died or passed out. <laughs> but I thought... Um, <laughs> That, that was the, I, actually. I have to say, the hardest thing about voicing Superman is is the uh, getting electrocuted. Um, he, he can seem to constantly being like you know a laser ray or something, and he and I have to just stand there and go, ah, you know, just like, ah, and this voice in him, you know, absolutely murders act uh, voice voice actors when they leave. You just can't. Uh, it's, it's hard to sustain that. It's hilarious, man. <laughs> Yeah, so um, just to jump in back to your like specific voice work, between yeah. Justice League Season 1 and 2, there was yeah. a change in Superman's character, and you in your voice, you could tell that you were doing it a little more... You played him younger in Season 2. In Season 1, I know Superman was drawn a little older. He was like more solemn. But in Season 2, with the first episode being Twilight, you really jump into it as more of a bridge between the animated series and Justice League Season... And Justice League... So did you purposely do a, your voice different, knowing that he's going to be a little younger, or what was your process? No, I, I, I really didn't. I kind of, you kind of have to, since you're not right, you know, the actors are not writing these things, we don't necessarily know what the arc of the story is going to be. I, I, I just kind of get there and do, sort of work with what we have that day, and 
And if you tell me the whole season seemed younger, I, I didn't know that. But, but um, I, if anything, I thought my voice had settled a little bit. It sort of it was a little more mature and a little more serious, but maybe I had it inverted in my head. Yeah, no, it was a little more serious. And you it was actually, serious, yes. You actually mentioned earlier how you felt like they, uh, your pitch of your voice was higher. Yeah, they did. They pitched my voice down in the first so season. I think the difference was the pitch because in season two, the pitch wasn't the same. Like, it wasn't as low. Like, it was very okay, low. Okay, well, maybe that's low. what it was because yeah. I just... They stay with my natural voice, I guess. Yeah, that's definitely that right, because case, yeah. when you're talking to me right now, I'm hearing like Superman from the later seasons rather yeah, than the okay. first season. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Samir, you got next question? Yeah, so um, what kind of impact has Superman had on you over the years? Uh, I have to say it has really been uh, so fun because especially going to these conventions that, that I've been doing for a couple of years, that to be able to connect with folks um, over a job that sort of, like you said, you guys were little kids when you saw this, and now you're still fans and you're adults. I, I, I'm shocked at how many young and old people, older people, are still huge fans of this thing. And, and it was um, such a touchstone for folks. You know, they come home from school, they grab a bowl of cereal and sit down and watch the Justice League. Yeah. And it was our Justice League. You know, the, the, that, that group of folks was, I think, pretty, pretty uh, iconic. Uh, for a lot of people and so I, I would say the greatest thing about it has been the staying power of that series over the years and it's been pretty um it's just gratifying you know to to have people love something that you did that much for so long it's just fun yeah let's talk about how kind of the series ended when like the end of the line came the show officially ended in 2006 uh, right. with, with we said with the episode Destroyer, uh, how was like the ending process like? Was there an anticipation that you're going to keep going, or was it a sudden ending? Uh, how did that all kind of wrap up that great run? Well, um, I think that we so we got got the word after I guess it was 45 episodes, and I think we did 10 episodes. So it was, so it was like four or five years. But then it kept. I, we were really sad. I was like, why? Why? Why is this ending? It's a popular show, and um, I think that um, I didn't really notice quickly after that because we keep doing video games and movies and um you know games video games uh, movies and stuff like that it's short it just kept going and then the conventions and um so to me it's just felt like it's not that it never stopped you know to me but um so i was sad but not ultimately it's just sort of sort of in a gift that keeps on giving you know George, now, have you heard of the JL reunion, like this fan campaign going on on Twitter? Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah, yes. I do. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that someday uh, one of these guys, one of the folks at Warner Brothers will listen, man. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> uh, well, now that the new movie is coming out, Just League vs. The Fatal Five, which you're now reprising yeah. your role, yeah. you think this will yeah. be like a bridge to maybe a new anime maybe. series? Maybe, maybe, man. It, would be, it sure would be fun. It was uh, Kevin and Susan and... Bruce, Tim, uh, right. and I was—I would love to get everybody else together, man. That—that—that'd be ideal. That would be awesome, you know? yeah. And with DC's new streaming service, DC Universe, that would be like the perfect place for it. They—they they totally should do that, man. Just even do a one-year limited uh, one-one-year limited series. I mean, I bet you Bruce Tim would do it. I bet he would do it. We actually had a chance. We had then we asked Bruce Tim in person uh, back at Comic Con. We yeah. asked him the same question about Justice League reunion. He said himself that I think. That, you know, if the opportunity came, he would uh, definitely be open to it. Yeah, it's just I one mean, of those the, things. The, he, is the, he is the guy, man. I, I tell you, that guy, I've never seen anybody that talented. I no, mean, I, I, yeah. sometimes we would sit there, you know, somebody else would be recording, and I'd sit next to him in the booth, and I'd just look down at him while he's, he's you know, giving, you know, notes and stuff, and he's just doodling on the front of his script. And I was like, my God, I would frame that. You know, he, he's <laughs> like such a talented animator. Um, so... So let's yeah. move. Let's move like uh, past the series ending. Let's move forward in the timeline. So you yeah. did uh, obviously injustice, right? And yeah, what was mm -hmm. kind of the difference in approach when you're doing a video game versus doing a series? Uh, video game is um, the last couple of video games I did. It's sort of immersive, and I had to wear like a hat. I mean, like a helmet with a little camera that's filming the side of your face and your facial movements so they can sort of plaster it onto the, um, uh, you know, the CGI on the, in the game. Yeah. I find that super weird. I mean, I mean, I, I didn't, um, it, it just felt super artificial to me. I had trouble with it, but I, I think it turned out okay. I just, it's not, it's not my favorite way to, way to work because it feels like someone 
got their hands on my head. You know, it's like, Wah! so, um, um, but it's a different, you know, it's a different, it's like anything else. It's just a, an evolution of the, of the art form in a, in a different way. And, the, and after that, pretty soon it'll be something different and you won't have to wear the helmets. You'll, you know, do something else. But, um, uh, yeah, that's it. Style wise, it's not that different. It's just awkward. It's awkward to get used to. So how was it uh, playing a more evil Superman in Injustice? Fun. Super fun. Just um, great to sort of dig dig a little deeper and scrape the scrape the barrel of uh, scrape the bottom of the barrel for uh, sort of Superman's less less attractive uh, less attractive qualities. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. Awesome. And there's actually another another movie which is actually one of my favorites uh, that you did. It was called Superman versus the Elite. Yeah, yeah. So how yeah. was it? How was it like doing that? That's more of like a direct comic like uh, adaptation. Uh, you did a lot of iconic lines, like the dream save us. How was yeah. that process like? I think I think the uh, the animation was different on that one too. Yeah. Right. That was not Bruce Tim. That was someone else. No, it wasn't. Uh, yeah. yeah. I uh, I believe. Uh, wait, you're talking about the movie? Yeah. You're talking was, about the movie. Yeah, the movie called Superman versus the Elite. Yeah. The first thing, I'm sorry, it was Hedge and Justice stuck in my head because that was the game my, my son had my name. Um, yeah, I just I, I don't I don't necessarily remember it being that different than the Justice League, but I know the animation was different, um, and um, we also didn't record it all together, which is hard to do because when we did the series, we were all in the in the room together pretty much, and it's kind of, sort of we got to play off of each other. But I think in that one we we weren't. As far as I, as I can tell, we were not in the room together, so I think it might. To me, it felt a little, little less. Uh, it was a little disembodied, perhaps. Uh, it's good, but well, to your credit, it really sounded just like you. You've completely. Yeah. Uh, they still give that Superman vibe, and when we oh, still good, read, good, good, like good. Uh, just to get just to be uh, on a personal level, when we read comics, you are the voice of Superman in our oh. head. Like, oh man, thank you. It's the thank same you. as That's Kevin Conroy, Susan, like. You guys are that voice. So if you're reading a Justice League comic, it's you guys, you know. So oh, it's a big great. part Thank of our uh, of our childhoods and even our adulthoods. Awesome, awesome. So, Umar, you got this, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you mentioned before in the start of the podcast the, uh, your love for the the uh, Superman movie with Christopher Reeve. Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you, um, what's your take on uh, Henry Cavill's performance as Superman in? in the DCEU, the live action universe that they have been building. I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I have no, no beef with it whatsoever. I thought it was cool. Um, you know, it's just a different, it's just a different gritty style more. Uh, I thought sort of, um, you know, the technology has changed. I mean, geez, some of those act, action sequences are so surreal. You can't believe how, how violent and, you know, um, real they are. Um, but uh, no, I have no problem with his performance. I thought he did a great job. Loved it. And I think we're all we're actually all in the same boat. We're big fans of uh, that interpretation of Superman. We think that you mm -hmm. know it's a, it's a good like twenty first century kind mm -hmm. of like take mm -hmm. on the character. And I think you exactly. know, people have this thing in the fandom where it's like you can only like one version of Superman. That's it. People are very like yeah, you know, right, right, defensive right, right. of it. And I think we're kind of examples of you can like everything we can even though chris Reeve is a little before our time we watch right. the blu-rays all the time and we listen yeah. to we watch the animated series and your right. work and cavill and snyder right. so it's all happening at the same time and you can enjoy all yeah. of it yeah exactly exactly i mean although i guess kevin conroy is really the no one's muscled in on him True, you're right. Years, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, but yeah i think hearing i think the fans who are listening to you say it yourself that you know you had no problems with the new version is pretty big nah. and um, oh yeah you know, I don't know if you know about like the behind-the-scenes stuff, but there's a lot of rumors that uh, WB might be going with the new Superman, or they're still kind of figuring out the next uh, movie with Henry Cavill. What's your like opinion on that? Do you want like I, Henry to come I'll back? I'll be or? honest with you, they they I have no idea. They don't they don't. I mean, I if my my feeling is Henry Cavill wants to do it, then I'll let the guy do it. I mean, I I, I don't like changing it so much. I mean, I, I like sometimes it, like the genre and the look and the feel changes. Great, get a get a different character, but. But um, if you're just trying to, if it's just trying to be different for a different sake, I, I then I start to get a little annoyed, honestly. <laughs> but um, um, but hey, you know, if it's the same kind of setup, don't change it. Don't change him. I thought he was great. And I think that all kind of wraps up with kind of like uh, again, like jail reunion and people sure. campaigning. We just saw Young Justice, uh, that series get renewed. 
almost pretty yeah. much exclusively on the fan campaign and there was like a renew young wow. justice hashtag and it blew up and then uh wb listened so i think with the thing with we got it we gotta get we, we gotta get the justice league we gotta we gotta do this man <laughs> and then, fans, uh, get these fans riled up man. and we're hoping that this cow podcast and getting kind of like this your voice out there kind of clamoring that'd for it great yeah I that'd think be great that's the bad that's Absolutely. pretty big yeah <laughs> And uh, Umar, you got one more question, right? Sure, sure. Yep. Uh, actually, on here, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, is, that is, I do not set your eyes. <laughs> I do not. You had, uh, you had the, do you have any plans for reprising your role, right? Uh, do I have any plans for it? Yeah, uh, do you have any you plans mean? for reprising your role? Like, after Fatal Five, like, is, have you have any projects in the work you can tease us on? Uh, I just did about four episodes of Law and Order, SVU, that'll be on. Um, <laughs> Anything <laughs> for in Superman? in terms of uh, animated stuff, I've been doing, you know, the Sephiroth on Final Fantasy for six years. Uh, um, going to a bunch of conventions this summer. I think it's in Florida and Raleigh and uh, Stockton, California. So I to, I'll, I'll put it up on my Facebook thing to let uh, fans know. So I've got a, uh, to my actor fan page. So I'll put that up there so folks know that. So, but uh, yeah, other than that, man, I'm, I, I do a lot of audio books. I read a ton of voiceover stuff and uh, on camera stuff when it happens. I just wrapped up seven years of scandal on ABC, which was fun. That's awesome. And um, just, uh, uh, you know, just like every other actor, man, I'm looking for the next gig. So, yeah, so I mean, let's just dive, in some to, dive into some of your outside of Superman work. I know myself and Shraz were huge Final Fantasy fans, and we yeah. love your work as Sephiroth. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we know super. the Final Fantasy VII is being remade on PlayStation. Have you been approached to reprise your role as Sephiroth yet? Or? You know, I, I just I, here's the thing. I, I don't know what I've done. Sometimes this, I just did. I worked <laughs> for Final Fantasy, and it was I think it was seven, and it was like five months ago. And I did like five days of work, but I don't know if it's what you're talking about because it sounds like there are different iterations of this thing, like a game or a movie or something. A any chance it might be uh, Kingdom Hearts? Kingdom Hearts 3 maybe? Mm, might be. Might be. <laughs> I'm not good about looking at the the, the, uh, the the title. When I'm going in, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do Step Roth, and I go do it, and then the fans tell me what I just did. But um, uh, I'm not sure if the next – there's some really big, huge thing that's coming up for – uh, Final Fantasy in I think two years or a year and I'm not I don't know I have not been contacted about that so I'm not sure if I'm doing it or not so well, we'll you know, we hope you do you actually you play Sephiroth Thank really man. well yeah it's a good so fun yeah like, I think you said you mentioned like the word fun every time we bring like a villainous role villain Superman or yeah. Sephiroth so do you like playing the bad guy more no, no it's just something different man I usually <laughs> I spent my whole career playing good guys it's just nice to do something a little different and uh on Scandal, I played an assassin for seven years. I mean, he was the worst guy ever. Um, I've, I've had just a really interesting career because I've gotten to play the nicest guys and the worst guys possible. So that's what it's it's uh, lucky. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I have to ask this. Um, it's one of my favorite shows, and I know you've only been on it for a couple episodes. But how was your experience with uh, working on Friends? It was it was a blast. It was a blast. I did three episodes of that. I went to school with uh, Dave Schwimmer and I were friends, and Matt Perry is an old friend, and um, it was just a blast, man. I, I, I would have, I would have stayed on that show for they kept kept on going. It's it's just one of those shows that are so well written um, that you almost can't. It's almost actor proof. You can't really screw it up unless you're really terrible. Um, the writing is so funny, so everybody just nailed it. And just to continue on and just go, kind of jump back into Superman as we kind of go on the la the last leg of this, but yeah, how like can you speak on like what Superman kind of means to society from your point of view? Like maybe not to you specifically, but like from your point of view, like as you've voiced the role and seen how kids have reacted, yeah. like how, in your opinion, yeah. what does Superman mean to kind of like American pop culture, even universal world pop culture? I think. I mean, I think. I think. Um, I don't know if it's, it's probably pretty obvious to everybody, but. Uh, Superman is sort of the iconic, um, uh, iconic sort of moral uh, barometer, you know. And and when there's a lot of, you know, a lot of relative, relative morality in the world, he, he sort of puts his foot down and says, "This is right. This is wrong." And you know, he fights with the uh, the underdog and the fights with the uh, people who can't, you know, care for themselves. And I just think it's a 
in, in, the, in many ways, it's a sort of a, uh, a messiah. It's sort of like a messiah slash, you know, mythological uh, person that is that everyone can relate to. And I, and I think he's sort of a, the moral a moral center. He's like, you know, fully superhero, fully man, almost like a Jesus figure, you know, in many ways. Cool. And uh, just going back, like you mentioned how your favorite episode and what some of your favorite moments were, but yep. behind the scenes, what were your favorite moments? Like working with the cast, any one moment, like this moment in the studio, this day was very, calls back to you, like any big moments from that time? Well, there weren't necessarily, I can't, I can't really, well, I do remember one moment that really freaked me out that made me laugh because Mark Hamill came in to do the Joker and I'd, I'd never met Mark Hamill. I, you know, just, I was a big Star Wars fan and um, he came in and I was like, he looks, you know, a bit, a little bit different, older, and that's all great. But his voice in real life is is not, he's just sort of like this guy, this normal, he sounds like he was in the theater department at school. And and, and then he did the Joker. First of all, he didn't sound at all like um, his character in Star Wars. And then when he did the Joker, I was like, what the, what is going on here? This guy <laughs> is amazing. He is super talented. He's, a, he's really, um, a uh, really, really talented voice actor, and his Joker just just cracked me up. I just sat and stared at him the whole time. Um, that, that was a neat moment, and I think the other moments, you know, we had such great great people who came in to guest star Jonathan Reese Davies, and you know, Powers Booth, and Dana Delaney, um, uh, Tom Sizemore. <laughs> a lot of folks came in there, and it just it just sort of screwing around between takes is what just oh, it's always my favorite part when you're not. Sometimes when you're just screwing around and people are doing voices for each other and uh, laughing and telling off-color jokes in between, it's just so fun. It's just ridiculously fun. Do you ever uh, catch the series now or, or show it to your kids? Or You know what? My, my youngest, when, when I first started doing the show, this tells you how, how long we've been doing it. My son is 16, and when it came out, my son was whatever that was. It was like a baby, practically, and... and there was a so this game that came out a Superman. It was a Superman cape and a and like a chest plate where I, I recorded the voice for it. And he would got it for my son as soon as he was old enough to wear it. He'd run around the house and he, you, know, you push the button and it down. It's like up, up and away, Superman. You know, <laughs> and my son was running around the house pushing that button and, and that was like I get to be Superman and his dad. That was pretty pretty dang hilarious. And how do they feel about that? Do they ever so, like? Do they have any like reaction to knowing? Like you were Superman for so many, so long, or when they when they see you on screen, do they have a particular reaction? It's just a, it's for for Superman especially. They just look at me and giggle because I'm just anything but Superman at home, you know. So that's what's <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned uh, you mentioned like you're gonna go to conventions. Any any plans come to New York Comic Con? Uh, you know, we did, we did New York Comic Con. We did it. We did a Justice League reunion. I think it was three years. Ago, yeah, it was a ago. couple of years ago. Yeah. It was so. It was such a blast, man. They should do. We should do one of those a year somewhere. I love the New York Comic Con. That's a great one. Oh, love definitely. If you end up coming to New York, we definitely would love. Yeah, we'd love, we'd love to meet to you also there. Pardon? But we'd love to meet you there also if you end up uh, coming. Let's let's do it. I, I, all they have to do is ask me. I'm ready to go. So. Sounds sounds great. Well, I mean, with just right, versus the Fatal Five, I'm assuming one of these years you get the call. Come down. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, they're, you know, they're doing. Uh, we're doing something at the um, what's the one in um, not San Diego, but the one in Anaheim. It's um, Ace, something of Ace. It's it's a big one. In, it's in March in uh, a- Anaheim. Anyway, we're, do, we're doing a big release of the Fatal Five. We're doing a big premiere thing there. Yeah, I so. think it's WonderCon, right? Yeah, WonderCon. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's awesome. So, it's, again, yeah. like uh, we we said this before, but. You were the definitive voice of Superman. Like it was a combination thank of you, you and Tim Daly together. Like we, well, as a toddler, were listening you. to Tim Daly that into I hope our to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, so just hearing you now, like it's a big thing. Like nostalgia is a big thing where fans yeah. love it, and hearing the voice of kind of like your childhood come back is what. Isn't that hilarious? That's yeah. so hilarious. And I forget, you know, I go into you go into the booth and you forget that it's just it lives on and it lives on and lives on. It's uh, like that, that that movie Father of the Bride that I did. I still get people coming to the, the airport to me and go, "So my daughter just got married. We saw that movie last night." And I was like, oh, well. <laughs> That's awesome, so, and, and it's hilarious. And again, like uh, if you if you had to pick any other character to play, would you ever give up Superman, or is that character completely ingrained in you now? Well, it's it's part of me. I mean, I can't. I can't 
I can only say it's, it's been a part of me for, you know, 15, 16 years. And uh, I, don't, I can't imagine it not, not being a part of me, you know, for forever, you know? Well, so. let's say um, if back in the day you couldn't be the role of Superman, what character would you be? Ah, um, I, you know what? I'd like to either be um, Flash. I think it's hilarious. And uh, I like, I like, I like uh, Batman. I do <laughs> Batman. Awesome. I think that would be hilarious. I think that's a good that's a jumping off point. You know, yeah. Kevin Conroy mentioned sometimes that you know the difference between voicing Bruce and uh, Batman is that Bruce is the mask and Batman is the actual it's hero. The so for yes. you, when you're voicing exactly. Superman, exactly, tell yep. us like the difference between Clark and Superman and or Kal El. Like if you had three, it's almost like three different people you're playing at once. So how does that work? Like in your well, head, like how do you decide between the voices? Well, I mean, you mean if if I were to do, what do you mean, like in Meaning, like, how's your process? Like, how do you differentiate Clark and Superman? Of who is for you? Who is the mask and who is the actual person? Well, I think I mean Clark is is Clark is the sort of um, uh, Boy Scout version of Superman, and Superman is is the re Superman is the is really who he is. I mean, is is the unmasked version of right? You know, um, Clark Kent. It's, it's he's Clark Kent is the bumbling, you know, um, uh, teenager basically version of the guy who has to get. Uh, get the work done. <laughs> so, so I think in terms of process, I just, you know, you just, you're just sort of the more innocent, uh, adolescent, um, idealistic version of, of Superman. And in your opinion, what was like your definitive Superman in your own head? Like, was it your, the movies? Was it like the animated movies of Superman vs. the Elite? Or was it the animated series? And the difference between Justice League and Justice League Unlimited uh, what's kind of like your favorite time playing Superman? If you had to I would time. say I would say the first and second years to me were um, were my favorite. I think, and especially with that opening credit sequence, you know, when they're walking forward and da -da -da -da, that music yeah. is so stirring, and they're walking slow slow motion toward the camera. I just think it's so uh, so killer, you know. Um, in terms of, um, what do you mean, in terms of movie, live action movies or the... Or uh, the actually, it could be a two-part question, but yeah, first I think within your own work, do you find one part of your Superman work to be definitive among the crowd? Um, I would say the first couple of years of the, of, of the show, of, of the Justice League series, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, I guess, started the second year, or was it the third year? I think Justice League Unlimited was the third year, I think the three Third year. Years. So yeah. I would say the first two years, um, I, I, felt, I feel like it was a little more true to... The spirit of, of um, Justice League and um, uh, what else? Um, uh, yeah, and and I love uh, Chris, Christopher Reeves' live action version. To me, is is the touchdown. Yeah, I think so. uh, I think it's still like the thing people most people go by. I think I think Marvel. Yeah. I think Kevin Feige, who's like the head of Marvel, said that before yeah. every single Marvel movie, they show the director Superman seventy eight. To everyone, they should, so, and they should. So they it's should. like a, it's still like a huge part. They just had their 40th anniversary uh, this oh, year, is that last right? year. I mean, yeah, Whoa. 2018 was the 40th anniversary. Holy crap! They were doing screenings, yeah, and that was fun to see. It's like oh, the good. first time. It was the first time I saw it in theaters myself. Like it's the first time we saw it when they did the 40th anniversary re-release. That was the first pretty, time I got to see it. Yeah. It's pretty great. It's pretty great, and the technology is, is it works. You know, it's a little cheesy in some spots, but but it but it works generally. You know. The flying and all the rest, so I think. And, but uh, and uh, just before we, it's like one more actually some questions about Justice League Unlimited. I'm, we might have, but uh, you know, if you remember, you remember the exact episodes. But there is uh, the Cadmus arc of Justice League Unlimited uh, had Superman a little more angrier, uh, a little more like he became a little more Batmanish in a sense, and in some way, the jokes about the mm. show as well. Mm. So was there like a process difference? I know you don't know much about. You don't remember the arcs themselves, but <laughs> I, uh, I really I need a I need a flow chart. No, I yeah, but chart before I do these podcasts because I, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm letting folks down because I should know more specific. No, 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 it's probably fine. I think uh, um, after so many years, the, it makes uh, sense. But you were playing you know, an angrier Superman, like especially like the Shazam episode where Shazam himself was much more of a like uh, the Boy innocent Scout. Boy Scout Superman, and yeah. then in contrast to Superman, Superman looks like the brooding, more cynical superhero after all these years. I'll be honest with you. I think that that really, I, I, I go where I'm directed on that stuff because the director and Bruce Tim or who the, the producer and director usually have an idea of what, what the temperature of, of, a, of a certain uh, scene should be. Uh, and I can give it sort of my take on it, but usually they say, you know, 
Superman's not, you know, he's he's not so disturbed by this. Keep it, keep him, you know, put a lid on it, put a lid on it, put a lid on it. Then, then sometimes like you can really let Superman go here because this is, you know, he's they've really crossed the line, and you can just let it fly. So those, but the, I usually wait to be told that because um, it's generally he doesn't lose his mind, you know. And do- he's usually got stuff under control. Do you guys? Uh, do you guys have? Do when you're voice acting? Do you see the animation already done or storyboards? Do you have something to no, go? No, no, we don't. We don't. We we get the script, and then when you go back for corrections, a lot of times you know they have to go back and do uh, pickups, which is they'll animate the, the animators. They animate to your voice. You give them the voice, then they go do the animation in Korea or I don't know where they end up doing it. But uh, but then when it comes back to the editor in America there's always things they're missing or like sometimes characters are too close to each other and they're like, you know, you're yelling, we need you to do that line softer. And, but, but then when we get that correction back, we do see it on a TV. So we actually, then we match the mouth. Um, then we have to actually look at the, um, uh, what's the word? The, um, you know, the mouth flap or whatever to make sure that the, that it matches. Ah, that's so interesting. You, so you change the performance based on how they animated the original voice performance then you have to modify based on the animation so you got and in, in final fantasy i did all the american voices for the japanese guy and we had to match <laughs> yeah. that was a crack up man because you could only put the mouth flap in for like i would hear the japanese and of course i don't know any japanese but it was like <laughs> and i'd have to put in you know cloud you must go to the bathroom like i would have to i would have to fit those words into the cadence of the Japanese, and it didn't make any sense, but yeah. Yeah. it's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious, yeah. yeah. S- Samir, what you got? <laughs> yeah, so um, do you think you'd ever, you know, make a cameo in, like, a future live-action superhero movie? Right, I would love that. It would be a dream. I would love it. It would be fantastic. Get the word out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might put it in. for all of us to see. Yeah, it would be, be great. It would be great. Um, yeah, we mentioned before about the just just to see reunion and how there's a campaign going on for uh, yeah my twitter i my twitter feed i get more about that on my twitter feed than anything else like 20 to 1 it's like that's it yeah that's a lot of people fun. a lot of people want you guys back i just can't believe i mean it's like it's a fever pitch man every day there's new stuff like funny yeah it's it's, it's crazy the power of social media today man. i know it i know it i, I mean that's honestly all the characters that I've, I've done i think superman is I think I probably have more fans around the world for a, you know an animated voice I did for Superman than anything else I've ever done. It's, it's amazing to me. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. But you know, like again, I'm, I'll wrap it up and just say that you know we all want the jail reunion and we all want Justice League to come back and the power of hashtags. We see it with Young Justice. We see it with uh, Zack yeah. Snyder's cut of Justice League, the movie. Yeah. And there's a lot of different stuff going on with that. So we just want like the fans. Oh, the fans have a power on this stuff, and I think when the more they ask I know for it. it I the know. Power to the fans, man. The fans run this. They run it. And I, I, rep- I think I'm representing most of our audience or '90s kids. Uh, you are Superman uh, in our you, heads. So uh, yeah, thank you so much thank for you. the work you've done and for the impact you've had on our childhoods. Uh, all four and of the us. And awesome. continue to do. And continue. So I think we thank can't you, wait. Man. We can't wait to hear you in Justice League versus the Fatal Five. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your podcast. All right. So. So from I'll just do a wrap up now. So from myself, from Zayan, from. You think that's it? It's not over, you Bugsy twit! If you think I'll just go to jail and rot, you're living in a dream world! Good. Dreams save us. Dreams lift us up and transform us into something better. And on my soul, I swear that until my dream of a world where dignity, honor, and justice are the reality we all share, I'll never stop fighting. Ever. Ever.